Here's one fact about every Canadian Prime Minister. John A. Macdonald's grave is the only Canadian Prime Ministerial grave that is fenced off. Trust me, I've been there. Alexander Mackenzie refused being knighted by the Queen three separate times in order to stay true to his humble origins as a Mason. Third Prime Minister Sir John Abbott actually didn't think he was fit enough to serve as Prime Minister. He actually backed his eventual successor, Sir John Sparrow David Thompson, to be Prime Minister. Sir Mackenzie Bowell is actually buried the furthest away from his original birthplace, being uh, buried 5,581 kilometers from his birthplace, and I've actually been to his grave as well. Sir Wilfrid Laurier and his successor, Sir Robert Borden, are buried the closest, the second closest in all of Canada, being just a five-minute drive in Ottawa. And as you can imagine, I've been to both of their graves as well. Adorably, Prime Minister Arthur Meehan is buried less than 10 minutes from one of the best chocolate factories in the country. And of course, I've been to his gravesite in St. Mary's. To step away for graves for a little bit, even though I have been to William Lyon Mackenzie King's grave, he actually is the only Prime Minister to serve three different times. Prime Minister R.B. Bennett is the only Prime Minister to not be buried in Canada. He's buried in Mickleham, England. If anyone is from that region, I would love to go there to see his grave in like, I don't know, 10, 15 years. While this may have nothing to do with Prime Minister Louis Saint Laurent, I actually saw Louis Saint Laurent Boulevard in Ottawa. Prime Minister John Diefenbaker is the only Prime Minister to be buried west of Sarnia, which is absolutely incredible. He's buried in the University of Saskatchewan's territory in Saskatoon. Lester B. Pearson is the Prime Minister you've got to thank for the busiest airport in not only the country, but also that free health care bill you got there. Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau had actually announced his intent to resign as the leader of the Liberal Party following his loss in the 1979 Canadian election. But after Joe Clark was waning in the polls, he rescinded his resignation, went on to win the 1980 election, and serve until 1984. John Turner ran for election in the 1984 election without actually having a seat to run from. As almost every Canadian knows by now, Brian Mulroney is the most recent Prime Minister to die. It does not feel like that was almost 10 months ago. Kim Campbell is the last Prime Minister to never say Happy New Year's as Prime Minister. Jean Cachin's mouth is partially paralyzed after a disease that he suffered when he was young. Breaking the trends out of, you know, being dumped in as the Prime Minister and immediately losing the next election, Paul Martin was dumped in in 2003 when John Cushan retired from politics, and Paul Martin won the 2004 election. Uh, Stephen Harper, um, well, his middle name's Joseph. As we all know, Justin Trudeau no longer has the confidence in supply vote. But interestingly, there is still a confidence supply vote between the Liberals and the NDP in the Yukon territorial government. Pierre Polyev is on track to win one of the largest majorities in Canadian electoral history.